Good day. So this is Advanced Educational Psychology. I am the reporter, David Chanagire, and we will be talking about uh, the topic of heredity and environment or the nature versus nurture and human development. So to start our discussion, so let us first have our objectives. First is to answer the which and how much question regarding the issue of heredity and environment. Next, there will be presentation of arguments regarding nature versus nurture. Also, we are going to identify the three methods in studying the effects of the heredity and environment, as well as give some characteristics influenced by heredity and environment and give some disorders influenced by heredity and environment. The heredity environment questions have been definitely answered. Yet in one fashion, each generation resurrects them. For example, a prevailing question in contemporary US society is why some of our children and adolescents are so violent. Is the child's tendency to be violent due to an inherited genetic flaw or due to the type of home environment or due to a combination of both factors? Some of the difficulties associated with the nature-nurture controversy stem from the fact that investigators often operate from different assumptions. Scientists began to ask which factor, heredity or environment, is responsible for a given trait, such as a mental disorder or a person's level of intelligence, later sought to establish how much of the observed differences among people are due to the differences in heredity and how much the differences in environment. And recently, some scientists have insisted that a more fruitful question is how specific hereditary and environment factors inter interact to influence various characteristics. Each of these questions leads to its own theories, interpretations, and method of inquiry. So let's first discuss the which question of heredity and environment. So the which question is, which is more important, heredity or environment? Most of the scientists today reject this formulation. They believe that phrasing the issue in terms of heredity versus environment has caused the scientific community at large untold difficulties. So counterposing heredity to environment is similar to some aspects to debating whether sodium or chlorine is more important in ordinary table salt. Okay, the point is that we will not have salt if we do not have both sodium and chloride. So it is the same with explaining which is more important, heredity and envir or environment. So, after answering the which question which is subjected, the scientist uh, now questions the how question. As scientists came to recognize the inappropriateness of the which question, some of them reformulated the issue, granting that both heredity and environment are essential for the emergence of any characteristics. They ask how much of each is required to produce a given trait. For example, what are the respective contributions made by heredity and environment to the occurrence of a given mental disorder? So scientists have traditionally sought answers to the how much question by measuring the resemblance among family members with respect to a particular trait. So, uh, some botanists use a similar experiment 
wherein to discover the separate contributions of heredity and environment by taking cuttings from a single plant and then replanting the plants in different environments. So one at sea level, one at an intermediate elevation, and one in the alpha zone of a mountain range. So each cutting developed into a new plant under different environment conditions. Because the cuttings are genetically identical, any observed differences in vigor, size, leaves, stems, and roots are directly traceable to differences in environment. Okay, so this kind of uh, experimentation is not possible with humans. Okay, nonetheless, nature occasionally provides us with the making of a natural experiment. From time to time, a fertilized egg by some accident gets split into two parts term identical or monozygotic twins. Genetically, each is an essentially carbon copy of the other. The study of the identical twins reared under different environment conditions is the closest approach possible to the experiment with plant cuttings. So in contrast with the uh, with the fraternal uh, with the identical twins comes the fraternal or the dizygotic twins which comes from two eggs. Okay, they are simply siblings who happen to develop separately in the womb at the same time and are born at the same time. So important evidence can be obtained and comparisons can be made between identical twins reared apart and fraternal twins reared together. So many scientists believe that such comparison revealed valuable information about the relative contribution that heredity and environment make to a particular trait or behavior. So by studying uh, children who are adopted at birth and reared by foster parents, one can compare some characteristics of the adopted children, such as IQ score or the presence of a particular mental disorder with that of their biological parents and their foster parents. Um, in this fashion, Research attempt to weight the relative influences of the genetic factor and the home environment. Okay, here are some arguments regarding nature versus nurture. Okay, a psychologist named Anne Anastasi believed that the task of science is to discover how hereditary and environmental factors work together to produce behavior. So she believes that nature and nurture are always intertwined, continually interacting. So she disputes the view of the witch and how much question of nature versus nurture. Because she argues that as applied to human life, neither hereditary nor environment exists separately. So it is hopeless to, uh, to identify which of the two factors produces a particular behavior or to determine how much each contributes. So, uh, despite that, Anastasi recognizes that the role of uh, hereditary, uh, the hereditary factors is more central in some of the aspects of development than in others. So, because of this, uh, she sets forth the notion of the continuum of indirectness. So the continuum of indirectness shows how nature and nurture or hereditary and environment affects the development of um, a human person or an individual. So according to Medawar of 1977, what appears to be a hereditary contribution in one context can be seen as an environmental contribution in another. Okay, this is another argument wherein we cannot question the which and how of nature versus nurture. Since what appears to be hereditary in one context or in one part can be an environmental contribution in another. So one example of this is um, a genetic disorder which is phenylketonuria or the PKU which is a form of, a severe form, I mean, of mental retardation, which results from the inability of the body to metabolize phenylalanine, which is 
uh, phenylalanine, a common ingredient of our in, uh, of our diet. So this disorder is genetically acquired, which means that the disorder is transmitted if we follow the Mendelian rule of the passing of traits from one generation to another. So, but if a child who has inherited a susceptibility to the disease, it means that a child has the trait of phenylketonuria, is given a disease, uh, a diet free of phenylalanine, there will be no buildup of toxic materials and the child's development is essentially normal. So, if we are going to consider that situation, under circumstances of a phenylalanine-free diet, so PKU can be considered or can be viewed as entirely environmental in origin. Since PKU shows up in the presence of phenylalanine but not in its absence. Okay, so in this portion or in this scenario with phenylketonuria, so we can see that though uh, phenylketonuria is a genetic disorder, but if it is uh, handled with free diet, which is an environmental factor, phenylketonuria will not, uh, the body will not, prov uh, will not produce toxins, and will, uh, will make the development of the child normal. So, that is why the question between nature and nurture is something that we cannot uh, just answer with the which and the how question. Okay, and also another, uh, another thing which, why we cannot question which which of which and how much of each is necessary for development is that human beings keep changing throughout life. Okay, so as human beings develop, so the, the contribution of each is immeasurable since uh, we do not know the specific numbers between uh, each counterpart of nature or nurture in the development of a human being. Okay, so this is the continuum of indirectness. So at one end of the continuum are the contributions of uh, heredity, which is the nature portion, which is on the top part, which are more direct such as physical characteristics like eye color and chromosomal disorders like Down syndrome. So at the other end of the continuum, so are the contributions of hereditary that are quite indirect, such as uh, social stereotypes that are member of a given society attached to various categories of skin color and hair texture. So as you can observe from uh, the table, so how nature and nurture contribute to uh, intellectual retardation. So as scholars can be mixed uh, to different shades and intensities, so heredity and environment or nature and nurture interact to various varying degrees to shape a trait like intellectual retardation. Okay, so as... Uh, the characteristic or um, as you can see from the table that as you go down the table the influence of nature in the development of intellectual retardation becomes less and uh, the contribution of nurture to mental retardation becomes greater okay so this is the continuum of indirectness. Okay, researchers use a variety of, mes uh, of methods to study the effects of heredity and environment. So the best way to study uh, genetic influence, for example, is on animal behavior, which is to breed the animals for certain traits like uh, aggression. So for ethical reasons, uh, such studies cannot be done on human beings, okay? So, <clears throat> scientists therefore have relied on three types of 
correlational research. One is family, second is adoption, and next is the twin studies. So first, let us discuss the family studies or the kinship studies. Okay, family or kinship study. So in this study, so researchers measure the degree to which uh, biological relatives share certain traits and the extent to which the closeness of the genetic relationship is associated, associated with the degree of similarity. So if the correlation is strong, so the researchers can infer a genetic influence. However, if we are going to talk about uh, family or kinship studies, so we cannot rule out environmental influence. Such as a family study alone cannot tell us whether uh, an obese child of an obese parents inherited uh, the tendency or whether they are fat because their diet is like that of their parents. So using the family kinship study, so we cannot rule out um, the environmental factor, but we can rule out the genetic uh, influence of the biological parents on the child. Okay, next is adoption studies. So in this, uh, in this study, uh, researchers look at the similarities between adopted children and their adoptive families. Also, uh, between the adopted children and their biological families. So, in this study, we can see that if the adopted child is more similar or has a particular trait with the biological parents and the siblings, we can see the influence of heredity. And when they resemble their adoptive families more, we see the influence of the environment. Okay, so uh, in some studies, uh, such as the Colorado Adoption Project, so they compare the resemblance between adoptive siblings with the resemblance between genetically related siblings. So in this study, compared to the family kinship studies, so we can actually see the, the contributions of both uh, heredity and environment to a specific child. Okay, so another study to show the influence of nature and nurture is <clears throat> the study of twins, which uh, a method that compares monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Okay, so monozygotic twins are twins that came from a same egg Okay, that was fertilized by one sperm. Okay, during the, uh, the fertilization process, the, the fertilized egg split into two uh, fertilized eggs, forming the monozygotic twins, which means that uh, the twins share the same genetic makeup. Okay, and this kind of twins is compared to the dizygotic twins with the same gender. So, a dizygotic twin is um, twins that came from two separate eggs, okay, and are fertilized by two separate sperms also. So, though they are genetically alike because they came from uh, uh, the same mother and father, but uh, they are just considered as similar. Okay, so uh, in this study, when uh, monozygotic twins are more alike in trait than dizygotic twins, so we see the likely effects of heredity. Okay, studies on monozygotic twins who were separated in infancy and reared apart have found strong resemblance between the twins. Okay, so this part of the the development of the twins which are separated shows that both twins resembled uh, the same uh, physical and physiological characteristics okay so in this part we can see the effect of or the influence of heredity so 
in uh, monozygotic twins, we can see that the influence of heredity is strong. Okay, and uh, in terms of the the attitude or the behavior of the twins when they are separated, so we can see that there is a difference between the behavior of the twins since they are uh, raised by different parents, okay, and are dif uh, and living in different environments. So. In this part, we can see that uh, how the child develops its behavior is more likely to be influenced by the environment. Okay, now, what are the characteristics influenced by heredity and environment? Okay, so um, since we are already over with the which and the how questions, which we all know is uh, not necessary to be tackled, or I mean, uh, they are unnecessary, since we all know that heredity and environment is uh, something that we cannot separate. So here, we are going to talk about uh, some characteristics which is influenced by heredity and environment. The first trait that we are going to talk about that is influenced by heredity and environment is the physical and physiological traits. Okay, so in comparison with the monozygotic twins and the dizygotic twins, so the monozygotic twins are more concordant than dizygotic twins in the risk of a medical disorder like hypertension. So we all know that monozygotic twins came from uh, a fertilized egg which is split uh, after the fertilization process. Okay, and dizygotic twins came from two separate eggs. So it means that the, the genetic makeup of monozygotic twins are alike compared to the dizygotic twins which are only similar. Okay, so the risk of uh, medical disorders like uh, the gen uh, genetically uh, acquired diseases like hypertension, diabetes, and other uh, disorders are more likely to happen to monozygotic twins compared to dizygotic twins. Okay? But we cannot also deny the fact that environment also affects how a person gain weight. Okay? So, the kind, uh, uh, the kind and amount of food eaten in a particular home or in a particular society or ethnic group and the amount of exercise that is encouraged can affect whether or not someone becomes obese. Okay, so the lifestyle also affects how a person gains weight. Okay, though you are uh, genetically, genetically talking, you are you have the genetic trait of being obese. But if your uh, environment or how your lifestyle is during the process, so it can also affect if you are going to become obese or not. Okay, another, in a study of... Um, okay, in a study of... Adopted children, so the adopted children whose biological parents had died before age of 50 are twice as likely to have died young themselves, okay? Though these adopted children are living with their foster parents, okay, the chances of, of dying young is twice as high compared to the, uh, no, um, their siblings, which are biologically from their foster parents. Since the biological parents has the genetic trait wherein they will die or there are high chances of dying before the age of 50, okay? So there is a chance that that genetic makeup or that genetic trait will be passed on to them, though the environment affects their lifestyle, okay? So there's also a chance, okay? The chances of of dying young also is twice higher. Ok, 
Okay, next is intelligence. Okay, so another factor that is uh, also affected by nature and nurture is intelligence. Okay, so intelligence is actually, some say that heredity seems to exert a strong influence on gene uh, general and intelligence as measured in intelligence tests or IQ tests. Okay, so apparently many genes with its own small effect combine to establish a range of possible reactions to a range of possible experiences. Okay, so the role of heredity in intelligence has emerged from adoption and twin study. Okay, though let's first talk about adoption. Okay, so if uh, the child is adopted has intelligent uh, biological parents, so the chances of high IQ is also high. Okay, and in twin studies, of course, the monozygotic twins have high chances of having the same intelligence compared to dizygotic twins. Okay? So, heredity seems to play a more important role in cognitive ability as people grow older. Okay, so in adoption studies, so young siblings score similarly, whether related to blood or adoption. But as they grow, so the scores have zero correlation with those of the adopted siblings. So furthermore, the adolescents' IQ correlate more closely with their parents or with their uh, biological mothers. So apparently, family environment also apparently uh, family environment is more influential for younger children, but adolescents are more apt to find their own niche in life by actively selecting environments capable or compatible with their hereditary abilities and interests. Okay, so. Though uh, the, the, fun, the factor of the environment in the intelligence of the child is also important, but mostly uh, the intelligence of an individual is, all, is more influential compared to the environment. Okay, so a longitudinal uh, study on twins have found that genetic influence and intelligence increases with age. Okay, so it is because of the contribution of the environment. Okay, like reinforcement or the factor of the teacher or maybe the peers that a certain individual had. Okay, so still heredity and environment plays an important factor in the intelligence of a specific individual. Okay, so now we have um, an issue regarding intelligence, uh, regarding the nature and nurture controversy. Okay, so psychologists differ in the relative importance they attribute to heredity environment. Okay, some believe that heredity plays an important part and also environment also plays an important part. Okay, so... Um, some investigators of the nature-nurture issue have asked also, okay, we are going back again to the which question and the how much question. And because they ask different questions, they come up with different answers also. So let's first talk about the hereditarian position or the side where they believe that heredity has a greater impact on intelligence compared to the environment. So the hereditarians conclude that 60 to 80 percent of the variation in IQ scores in the general population is attributed to genetic differences and the remaining of the environmental differences remains to the environmental differences. Okay? 
So the, hereditar uh, the hereditarians tend to face uh, to phrase the nature nurture question primarily in the terms of the how much question. So uh, if we are familiar with the IQ test, so the IQ test is a measure of intelligence. So it's called the uh, the IQ stands for uh, intelligence quotient. So today, intelligence test provided by provides an IQ score. Okay, so this is based on the test taker's performance relative to the average performance of other individuals of the same age. Okay, so many psychologists believe that the assessment of intellectual abilities is one of their disciplines' most significant contributions to society because it measures um, how high or how low is the intelligence of a specific individual. But other psychologists say that it is a systematic attempt, okay, so to enlist or I mean by illicit to measure people so that they can select the desirable ones and put um, and put them in the proper spot and reject the others okay so so data are shown from 29 studies of fraternal twins or the dizygotic twins of the same sex who were reared together so the median IQ correlation coefficient of the fraternal twins is positive 0.62 so in sum the identical twins reared in different homes are more uh, are much more alike in IQ than fraternal twins raised together. So also, as the biological kinship between two people increases or as they get closer, the correlation between their IQ scores also increases. Okay, and on the basis of this and other uh, and other evidences, so the hereditarians typically conclude the statement that 60 to 80 percent of the variation IQs variation of IQ is generally attributed to uh, genetic differences not by environmental differences okay from the uh, from the argument of the hereditarians comes the rebuttal of the environmentalist. So they believe that intellect is increased or decreased according to the degree of enrichment or impoverishment provided by a person's social and cultural environment. So Jensen um, dispute the claim that intelligence is primarily a function of heredity. Okay, so some disagree with the formulation of the nature-nurture question in terms of how much and insist that the question should be how hereditary and environment interact to produce intelligence. Okay, so uh, others such as uh, Kamin of 1974 go as far as to assert that there exists no data which should lead a prudent man to accept the hypothesis that IQ test scores are in any different or are in any degree heritable. Okay, so uh, Kamin's view, like Jensen, are commonly called environmentalists. So they argue that mental abilities are learned. Okay, so it's based on how a person acquire uh, enrichment in his study. So the environmental rebuttal talks about the factor of the teacher as well as um, like the peers or the individuals that surrounds the people, the person itself on how it will develop its uh, intellectual capacity. Okay, so from the hereditarian uh, concept, 
to the rebuttal of the environmentalist, <clears throat> here comes the contemporary scientific consensus. Okay, so Lachlan and colleagues of 1975 contended that we need to consider these three components. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a unified thought or concept between how intelligence and uh, how intelligence is affected by nature and nurture. Okay, so first is the genetic endowment when intellectual stimulation is held constant. Okay, how genetic uh, genetic traits stimulates intellectual capacity and how environmental stimulation affects genetic potential. Overall, uh, the covariance of heredity and environment are relative to each other. Okay? We go back to the concept that we really cannot uh, identify how much uh, nature or nurture uh, affects intelligence or which affects intelligence, uh, nature or nurture, but we need to think that both of them coexist to complement the development of an individual. Okay, the third uh, characteristics that we are going to discuss, which is affected by uh, nature and nurture, is personality. So, personality encompasses a person's overall pattern of character, behavioral, temperamental, emotional, and mental traits. Okay? Just like the other three characteristics, like the physiological and the intelligence. Okay? So, something so complicated cannot be ascribed to any one major, either uh, one major influence, I mean, either heredity or environment. Okay, we, not, we cannot equate the contribution of uh, nature and nurture in the development of the personality of the individual. However, uh, there, are some, uh, there are some aspects of personality that appears to be inherited, at least in part, just like uh, the temperament. Okay, so researchers concluded that temperament seems to be inborn. So, temperament talks about the person's basic style of approaching and reacting to situations and this uh, personality of an individual is considered to be inborn. Okay, so we can see that if, um, if the temperament or the personality of an individual is uh, closely related to the biological um, biological parents. Okay, so we can consider that it is based on heredity, just like the other characteristics. But if the personality of an individual is more closely related to the uh, personality of the adoptive or the foster parents, so we can say that the po uh, the personality of that individual is solely is more on the contribution of the environment. Okay, so just like the other characteristics, personality or the development of personality of an individual is uh, also contributed by the environment. Okay, just like how um, a person's foster parents uh, teach good, uh, good behavior like morality, conduct, ethics if is also a contributing factor to the personality of individual of an individual. Okay, now we're going to talk about um, the disorders influenced by nature and nurture okay first disorder that we are going to talk about that is influenced by heredity and environment is alcoholism so according to statistics 
So, alcoholism may be largely born, not made. It means that uh, there are higher chances of acquiring the trait of alcoholism two identical twins, which is uh, they are genetically alike compared to the fraternal twins, which are uh, mostly similar in traits. Okay, so the chances of alcoholism to identical twins is higher compared to fraternal twins. So there is considerable evidence that alcoholism runs in the family and that a heightened risk results from the interaction of genetic and environmental factors. If you are, if you have the genetic trait of alcoholism and you have peers who are alcoholic themselves, so there are higher chances of an individual to be alcoholic. Okay, so some research suggests also the same magnitude of heritability for women. Okay, so they say that uh, the the contribution or the development of alcoholism for women is more likely to be social or psychological in aspect. But they discovered that uh, alcoholism for women is in the same magnitude of alcoholism with men. Okay, next is schizophrenia. So schizophrenia is a group of uh, mental disorder marked by a loss of contact with reality and by such symptoms such as hallucinations, delusions, and other thought disorders. Okay, so schizophrenia is suggested to have strong genetic ele element. Okay, so the biological children of women with schizophrenia are more likely than people in the general population to suffer from the disorder themselves. Okay, there are higher chances of developing schizophrenia if it runs in the family. So, just like the identical twins and the fraternal twins, so identical twins are concordant to develop schizophrenia than fraternal twins. Okay. Although there is uh, a strong evidence of biological transmission of schizophrenia, we have to ask why not all identical twins are concordant for this disorder. Okay? We know that identical twins are concordant, but it is not necessarily that 100% of the twins will develop schizophrenia. So, the answer may be that it is not the illness that is transmitted, but a predisposition towards it. So, if a certain environment stresses occur in the life of someone who is genetically predisposed, okay, so you are, you have the trait, but it is not um, expressed by your body, but it is uh expressed by the body through environmental stresses, so you may develop schizophrenia. But if you are genetically predisposed, but the environment is not stressful, so there are no chances of, or there are no chances of developing schizophrenia. So in this aspect, we can say that uh, the schizophrenia can be either genetically passed on, or it can be um, expressed through uh, environmental stresses or the factor of the environment to the individual. Okay, so a Swedish study found that males who had grown up in a city were more likely, more likely to develop schizophrenia than were those from rural areas. Okay, so in this study, we can see the contribution of uh, the environment of the development of schizophrenia, okay? So, if we consider schizophrenia as genetically predisposed, so the contribution of the environment can be a great factor in developing, a, in developing schizophrenia. So, in this study, it shows that if a person is genetically predisposed of schizophrenia, 
if he if he will live in a city, there is more likely to develop. He is more likely to develop schizophrenia compared to an individual who lives in rural areas. Okay, since uh, like in cities, there are a lot of stresses compared to rural areas where it is more peaceful. Okay, next is infantile autism. So, infantile autism is a rare developmental disorder which is the inability to respond or to communicate with other people. So, usually it develops within the first two and a half years of life, sometimes as early as the fourth month. So, the child does not cuddle, uh, it does not make eye contact, uh, they treat adults as interchangeable, or they claim mechanically to one person, and may learn to speak but may be able to sing a wide repertory of songs. So, this infantile autism is three times more likely to develop in boys compared to girls. Okay, so in infantile autism, um, <coughs> excuse me, the impact of the environment is minimal. Next is um, depression. So depression is a serious uh, it is a serious clinical syndrome. So it is different from the normal temporary sadness. So it is an affective disorder or a disorder of mood. So in which a person feels unhappy and often has trouble eating, sleeping or concentrating. So it seems to involve a variety of causes mechanism and symptoms okay so depression has a strong uh, genetic basis okay so depression affects more people and strikes earlier in adolescence and young adulthood so women are two to three times as likely as men to be depressed but this imbalance is narrowing as more young men are affected Okay, so identical twins have 70% concordance rate compared with fraternal twins or other siblings and parents and children which have only 15% of concordance rate. Okay, so however, many forms of depression results from interaction between inherited biochemical sensitivity and life stresses. Though depression has a strong genetic basis, of course, the stimuli of stress in the life of an individual is also a factor in developing uh, depression. Okay, so some stresses are physically, like a uh, body illness, okay, so change in the chemistry of the central nervous system, okay, so how... How healthy is your nervous system as well as the effect of various drugs okay some are psychological like changes in family structure shifts in male and female roles okay so increasing urbanization and uh, greater geographic mobility or mobility that disrupts network of relationship like a transferring from one place to another okay this can affect, uh, this can cause depression to children. Okay, so because hereditary factors, uh, different people respond to the same environment in, the, uh, in different ways. Okay, so that ends my report. I hope that uh, you have learn something from this discussion and hope to see you next time. Goodbye and thank you.